Hello and welcome to News 9 Live. I am Aditya Raj Kaul and you are watching In India's Interest. In a historic development, Modi government has decided to reopen cases of killings of Kashmiri Hindus since 1989 in Jammu and Kashmir. The very first case to be re reopened is that of Justice Nilkant Ganju who was killed on 4th of November 1989 by JKLF terrorist Yasin Malik. JKLF in a statement had said that they have killed the retired judge for giving death sentence to their leader Makbul Bhatt for murder of CID inspector Amar Chand in 1968. Terrorist Yasin Malik later in 2002 in an interview with BBC's Hard Talk with Tim Sevistian confessed to the killing of Justice Nilkant Kanju in public globally. Meanwhile, State Investigative Agency of Jammu and Kashmir Police has on Monday issued a public notice asking people to come forward to share facts and circumstances of the case. People sharing crucial details would be suitably rewarded and their names will be kept anonymous. Viewers, justice is often delayed but not always denied. Today, it's been almost 34 years that Kashmiri Pandits have faced genocide, ethnic cleansing and forced exodus from Kashmir. After 34 long years, there is a glimmer of hope in the community of Kashmiri Pandits for justice, for some glimmer of hope for justice and corridors of power listening to them. And now this brings us to the big questions that we are asking in India's interest. Why were successive governments silent on justice of Nilkant Ganju, the judge in Jammu and Kashmir, who was killed on 4th of November 1989? Why doesn't Modi government name and shame people protecting and paying Yasin Malik from the Indian intelligence agencies or even bureaucrats? And finally, we ask, will Modi government plead for a fast trial in the case to hang Yasin Malik until death? That's the big question. When will Yasin Malik be hanged? Let's listen in to this reaction coming in from Swapna Raina, granddaughter of Justice Nilkan Ganju all the way from United States. This is the first reaction here on News9 Live. Indian's government recent decision to revisit the 1989-90 Kashmiri Hindu genocide cases after 34 years evokes a mix of emotions for me. Among these cases, the first one to be reopened is of my beloved grandfather, Justice Neil Kanganju, who fell victim to JKLF terrorists on November 4th, 1989. This decision has reignited in me a sense of optimism and for my community as well. This optimism had waned over the past 33 years as we longed for people to finally hear, acknowledge, empathize, and grasp the ordeal that we Kashmiri Hindus have gone through. Despite the pain of reopening the old wounds, the underlying hope remains that justice will prevail. It's about time that world paid attention to the atrocities committed on Kashmiri Hindus, on individuals and on a community at large, categorizing it as a genocide. We have waited too long for justice to be served. I sincerely hope that reopening of Daddy G's case, Justice Nilkan Ganju's case, will be one of the hundreds of cases that will follow and will bring some sense of relief and closure for the families who are waiting for justice to be served. I thank Government of India for this decision and um, wait to see what it brings for us. It definitely does bring a ray of hope. People who pick up arms, somewhere, somehow, inside them, they have uh, a violent person inside them. There is something that that is violent about them and Yasin Malik can be no exception. He isn't a Chihuahua of any kind. So why he picked up arms? Yes, the Indian state at that point of time did indulge, I mean, and I have no shame in saying this, in, in rigging these elections in which they ended up making sure that National Conference wins these elections and Kashmiris, a lot of Kashmiris were dismayed that this was a rigged election in which maybe somebody else should have won and not National Conference. But Saying that he picked up arms because of this, by that logic, every Kashmiri should have been picking up arms and should have been killing people. But, uh, but having said that, you know, he picked up arms, he went to Pakistan to get trained. It was these five terrorists who went with him, uh, four of them and, and Yasin Malik. So, these people came back and then they were, they were an authority unto themselves. They were 
un they had unbridled power so to say the state had given up there was there was this general um, sense among police among administration that things are not in their control which is true to some extent because the chief minister had delegated his position he had run away to london so he they these guys had a free hand so yasin malik i would again again i i wouldn't put too much of emphasis from what made him pick up arms there is a violent person inside you which makes you pick up arms otherwise if if you say that i there was an injustice against me by that logic half of the world should be killing the other half there were five people who were hiding behind the car an old car was lying there and they were hiding behind that the moment the gallal teplo passed through that car they fired from the behind the moment they fired from the behind the gallal teplo just turned out and told them look cairo why are you firing from my back if you i have a guts fire on my chest so they just ran away they fired in the at air and they ran away so that was that that is how the tikalal teplo was killed so it was well known that tikal claimed also those days that we killed the tikalal teplo then the journalists asked him why you killed tikalal teplo because we wanted because till he he would have been alive we could not have achieved what we wanted you never killed the judge who tried and passed the death sentence on the jkls leader Well these were the reactions that we were picking up uh, of uh, Swapna Raina the granddaughter of uh, Justice uh, Nilkan Ganju and two Kashmiri pandits for context on who Yasin Malik is and what Kashmiri pandits really went through let's go across live to Swapna Raina who's joining us live from United States we also have two special guests uh, SP Ved uh, joining us former director general of police from Jammu and Kashmir police and Amit Raina activist who had petitioned in the Supreme Court of India we'll ask him what this means we were discussing with him last week that there could be a possibility of reopening of cases but isn't it shame and embarrassment for the supreme court that what they denied now the government of india is at least beginning to do swapna rena your first comments we heard that video but emotionally and you know within yourself what is your family what does your family members think about this because i met urmila rena ji last evening at an event and coincidentally you know 20 minutes later i heard that this development has happened and at that moment you know she had told me that no government has heard her no government has heard uh, the pleas of your family so what's the conversation like within your family members right now when you hear, hear that modi government is planning to reopen this case uh, good afternoon aditya ji first of all thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on your show here the first reactions honestly um to be very honest with you we have just been exchanging messages everybody is still kind of in you know not really disbelief but like after so long something is happening so we have really not had a uh, you know a verbal conversation but it does bring a ray of hope uh, some sense that uh, you know this is an open and shut case you yourself showed a clipping uh, yasin malik admitting to have killed daddy ji and then it's like it's a, a supreme court dismissing the case saying it's too late um that is adding insult to injury for kashmiri pundits first of all your beloved one is snatched away from you in senseless killing right um and then you're asked to prove it time and again that this actually happened when the proof is right there stark naked in front of them in their face right. so it uh, back to your question it does bring hope and uh, honestly i um, hope not only for me over the years in the killing and i'm hoping and praying that it opens many more cases and finally the world is going to acknowledge you know that there has been a genocide of kashmiri pandits well and we, we some are, yeah we are putting across this public notice on the screen right now and i'm i'm sure it will be all across the social media where the investigation uh, of Sri Nilkan Ganju retired judge murder case from state investigative agency and it is asking people to cooperate and bring out the circumstances of the events if there are any witnesses and perhaps the family can also reach out uh, and i'm sure the police will 
uh, find the witnesses in this case. But you know, before I go to SP Ved and of course uh, Amit Rana, Swapraji, I want to ask you, uh, you know, how was uh, Justice Nilkan Ganju? Can you elaborate his personality? Because you know, I really fail to imagine uh, a person who protected to the, protected the law for all these years, who stood for justice all these years, actually he was killed so mercilessly and nobody in the government, nobody uh, in the judiciary, nobody in the investigative agencies cared all these decades uh, to bring him justice. How is his personality? How is he like? So you sure you asked me that question and we only have a few minutes because if you, I get started on yeah. Daddy G's personality, I would go on and on and on. But um, to kind of put it in, you know, just sum it all up, Daddy G was a tall person, not just by actually being tall height wise he was tall by his virtues he was tall he was a self-made man very hard working and a man of virtues and those are the values that he instilled in all his grandkids and his thing was like make yourself as strong as you possibly can to be able to you know stand in any storm and still be there when the storm passes and stand by the truth no matter what. And that's what he did. And um, very hardworking. And we're talking about 40, 45 years back. Even then, I am, I myself am so, so proud of being his granddaughter and feel blessed because even back then, he didn't see any difference between a boy and a girl. Believe it or not, Aditya, he was the first person who taught me how to play cards. Can you imagine that back in like, um, 70s. Um, I watched my first movie in a theater with Daddy G. We used to have conversations. Um, he he was a very respected person, and he was unfortunately he was also um, he kept saying that nothing's going to happen to me. He had too much faith in the people that he was with, serving, giving them advice they used to come there was not a single day in my mata mal which is nanihal my mom's home that there was not a single person there was not somebody in his office asking for advice on personal legal aspect and no matter what time of day or night i used to get up daddy g was always in his office working a extremely hard working person honest truthful and he did what he until the last moment he did what he believed in you know stand by the truth um don't let anything you know sway away from being honest and truthful right and he made us so strong and uh, i like i said i could go on and on but absolutely and, absolutely um, and i and i could be biased and amazing amazing uh, well, i'm glad i'm glad firstly being. that you're joining us so early in the morning it's 4 30 a.m in the united states and you actually uh, joined us live. I, I'm glad you're here. If you could just stay on with us for a few more minutes, uh, Swapna. I want to go across to Mr. Ved because, you know, he's a top police officer from Jammu and Kashmir, a very brave uh, and committed, uh, you know, soldier on the field. Uh, he's been in several of these encounters and he was a police officer at that particular time as well. Uh, sir, before I come to you, I will ask my producers to play out uh, that interview, uh, just a five second clip of Yasin Malik with Tim Sebastian on BBC Hard Talk. Never killed the judge who tried and passed the death sentence on the JKLF leader, Makhbul Bhatt. Yes. You never killed the judge who tried and passed the death sentence on the JKLF leader, Makhbul Bhatt. Yes. You never killed the judge who tried and passed the death sentence on the JKLF leader, Makhbul Bhatt. Yes. Well, this is a confession. This is an open admission of guilt. This is Yasin Malik in 2002 speaking to Tim Sebastian in London in a very popular show, Hard Talk on BBC. None other than BBC. He is accepting that he killed Justice Nilkan Ganju. Then, Mr. Vaid, why was the JNK police not able to arrest Yasin Malik, not convict him? not be able to hang him. Was there any political pressure? Was there any pressure from some intelligence agencies? Perhaps, sir, you were a senior officer. You'd be aware what kinds of pulls and pressures there were, which aren't now today. Aditya, uh, good afternoon to you and uh, everyone. I think uh, uh, you know the reasons. 
I <laughs> don't want to elaborate to those. Uh, everyone in this country knows. And uh, uh, see, uh, the very same Yasin Malik uh, admitting on the BBC Hard Talk that he killed uh, the, uh, uh, Mr. Ganju. Uh, what, what a travesty that it could not be properly investigated and challenged. I think it is a collective failure uh, of a criminal justice system, the collective conscious of the country and uh, the political reasons are very, very obvious. Uh, in fact, uh, Yasin Malik, uh, a, a murderer, was sharing uh, the uh, stage with uh, the honorable prime ministers and the uh, uh, Opposing as a Gandhian of uh, Kashmir, uh, look at the. Uh, in in fact, I am pained that even Supreme Court uh, uh, refusing to uh, order opening of such cases, and 34 years is a very very long time. Uh, in fact, I was listening to uh, his granddaughter from U.S. My tribute to uh, Judge Mr. Neil Kant Ganju and uh, look at the ray of hope in uh, in that uh, lady um, even after 34 years um, what a travesty of justice uh, it's famous saying that justice uh, delayed is justice denied 34 years is a generation and uh, uh, I, I, I have no explanation why uh, this uh, was not done because those days uh, was there in the valley. But yes, uh, this was not my part of assignment. But uh, obviously, the, it's a collective failure of the criminal justice system. I, uh, a family waiting and like Mr. Ganju, there are so many cases lying um, incomplete without proper uh, collection of evidence without investigation, proper investigation. And uh, I think uh, the community is still demanding justice. And I think uh, the country owes an explanation to the, uh, the this minority of Kashmir. Everyone is uh, answerable to this community, um, having faced this kind of accident, which was done actually on the... Uh, it, it is not that Yasin Malik and his likes were uh, disgruntled because of the uh, political uh, era fairy in the elections. That is That was one reason, but that does not justify picking up gun. It, there was a, obviously, you know, the Operation Topak part of the Pakistan's plan to uh, force my uh, Kashmiri Pandit community out of Kashmir Valley. Though later on, people started putting it on uh, the then governor, Mr. Jack Moon, which is not true. It was a, uh, a a created narrative uh, just to divert the attention. Actually, it was done on the instructions of the people handing across right. to ensure that all Kashmiri pandas are forced to run away from Kashmir Valley so that the kind of jihad they wanted to enforce on Kashmir Valley, which they, to a very large extent, succeeded. Well, it's a collective failure. That's what former DGP of Jammu and Kashmir, Mr. Ved, is saying. Amit Rana, quickly coming to you. Uh, you know, you petitioned time and uh, time and again on uh, you know justice to Kashmiri pundits, commission of inquiry, but the Supreme Court rejected it. Uh, how does it feel now that the Jammu and Kashmir police, the government has finally decided at least one case is being re reopened. Perhaps there could be many more. What's your expectation? What was your reaction when you first heard this? See, the irony is a man who must have delivered justice to hundreds of families. His own family has been waiting for justice for 34 years. And this tells you how the system and the state operates in this country. Uh, they have uh, reopened the case. It's a welcome step. But there are hundreds and thousands of cases of Kashmiri Pandits which continue to remain uninvestigated, which includes uh, cases, I would, uh, cases of serving officials who were killed on duty, which includes Lassa Kaul, which includes the prominent leader Tiklal Tapu, and many, many other cases of Kirja Tikku, Rana Ganju, 
Sarla Bhatt, who again was killed uh, for doing her duty at uh, Sherry Kashmir's show. So there are multiple cases which are pending, and I uh, welcome this, uh, the reopening of this case. But I was hoping that they will form an SIT, reopen most of the cases where witnesses are available, where Satish Thikku case witnesses are available, um, Justice Nilkan Ganju cases, uh, case witnesses are available, BK Ganju's uh, cases witnesses are available. There are multiple cases where both victims, investigating officers, so many of them who may have retired but available, and uh, even the person who was responsible for the same Yasin Malik Bitte Karate and other gangs are very much alive and can be uh, prosecuted and brought to justice. So uh, it is uh, it is quite late, uh, it, although welcome, but too little and uh, too little a step to be taken. They need to fast track the cases because, uh, as uh, Vaits have rightly said, justice cleared is justice denied, and uh, it should not uh, be. One cannot be selective on the cases it picks up. Uh, there may be reasons uh, on the official front, but I think every family who has faced the brunt of terrorism in Kashmir deserves this. Absolutely. But Amit, would your organization or would the Kashmiri Pandit community now reach out to the government again and perhaps the JNK police as well that yes, there should be a time bound trial uh, in the Justice uh, Neelkan Ganju case? Uh, quick investigation, speedy trial, because it's an open and shut case, it's a confession and uh, in other cases as well, like you mentioned, uh, Bitta Karate and Yasin Malik are two people who have done several killings. So why not investigate this together? Yes, in fact, the uh, clip where, which you were showing of uh, BBC Hard Talk, James Sebastian, he further says, he says Justice Ganju was responsible for sentencing Makbul Bhatt to death, and that was his crime. Makbul Bhatt was, was a great leader of Kashmir, to which uh, Tim says that uh, that's an assumption. He says, no, it's not an assumption, and he needs to pay for that crime. So there has been, it is a clear admission. You have Bitta Karate uh, on a Manoj Raghuvanshi interview saying, naming people he has killed. Uh, and he's today behind bars on a case which is not related to the multiple killings he has done. Yes, yeah, um, welcome step that has uh, reopened the case, but it has to be fast track. Uh, there has to be a time bound investigation. There has to be a trial and uh, and uh, punishment given. If we cannot deliver justice to the family of a judge, if we cannot deliver justice uh, to the family of serving officials, Air Force officials who have been killed, then I don't know what we are doing. Look at the case of four Air Force officers. It has been now dragging for two and a half. Rubia Said case where the person who was kidnapped has come and uh, identified Yasin Malik. We also know the implications of that case and how it emboldened uh, that kidnapping, how it emboldened the JKLF and changed the history of Kashmir. And we have not been able to deliver justice. So I am seriously, I, I appreciate the intention of the current administration, the LG administration of delivering justice to Kashmiri Pandit, but I hope this. This intention does not go down the drain if they do not make it time bound and do, they do not uh, uh, fast track it. Absolutely, that's a very important statement by Amit Rana that this needs to be fast track justice, speedy investigation, and a time bound trial. Mr. Ved, you know, as a JNK police senior officer, you know, several people look up to you. Uh, how do you react to your own organization now uh, taking this upon themselves on their shoulders to investigate this case again? You know, I was speaking to a senior officer two months back who actually gave me a list of Kashmiri Pandit cases and said that if I could share any details. At that point, it, doesn't, it didn't came to my mind that actually the police would be looking into these cases and reinvestigating this. But how do you see uh, this SIA taking up these cases? And do you think SIA is capable now that they have taken up uh, upon their shoulders to investigate this and bring to justice Yasin Malik? Uh, it's a well, very welcome step. In fact, uh, it should have been done much, much earlier. Uh, and uh, good that it has started in spite of Supreme Court saying no. Uh, I was expecting even the order from the Supreme Honorable Supreme Court that yes, constitute an SIT uh, and uh, uh, all these high profile cases of Kash Kashmiri Pandit, prominent people getting killed, Tikalal Tapu, blah, blah, Mr. Kheda, Mr. Kant, so many. Uh, I can uh, list uh, uh, dozens of them. I think uh, all these high profile cases should be uh, reopened uh, and SIA is, uh, is, is the right organization. 
because uh, it has sufficient unlike district police it has sufficient uh, staff it has uh, uh, the the uh, prop they have proper training and i think they should be like nia does its job all across the country the sia is the right uh, it has proper staffing and it has the bear with all and resources and they should have time bound investigation in instead of having investigation for years together just have a, a, a time bound maybe a month or two and uh, uh, whatever evidence whether scientific whether uh, witnesses whatever is available collect it because uh, so many years have passed you may not get some of the vital uh, uh, the evidence but whatever is available the witnesses the uh, uh, like you saw uh, in case of uh, rubia sayed kidnapping she deposed before the court and uh, recognized him and uh, that becomes uh, quite a uh, proof against him similarly in all these cases the uh, teams must be constituted who should identify what uh, is possible at this late stage of 34 years uh, uh, wherever uh, it is feasible collect it and uh, i think uh, close the investigation and chalan it in the courts so that uh, judges also do not uh, uh, treat these like uh, routine cases right. they should be in fact i would suggest a special special court for this and uh, let them uh, do it on day to day basis hearing and complete the trial within one year and uh, convict or whatever uh, punishment is to be given to these people absolutely everyone has a consensus that there needs to be a speedy trial a time bound trial so tarana if i can come to you for the last word you know uh, how do you react uh, or you know what's your response to people on social media or in the intelligentsia or in the politics who say that it's been 34 years let's forget it let's not take revenge you know delivering justice to ganju family or taplu family uh, would be some kind of a revenge and let's just forget the past let's talk talk about peace let's go back to kashmir uh, is it so easy do you think that this is revenge or do you think this is justice and how, how, what do you tell those people so i i one interesting thing if that's what they will tell me so first thing that they are acknowledging that something was done the trustees were committed because that's what where that revenge piece comes from so indirectly they are they are agreeing to it and move on it's not easy to move on how do you move on what do you move on from where the acknowledgement is not there so you move on when there's an acknowledgement when people you know there's a consensus that this happened you can treat if there's somebody is sick you can only start the treatment once you have identified and diagnosed the cause of the disease right, right. till date we have not seen officially anybody saying that kashmiri pandits kashmiri hindus there was a genocide that we were forced to flee overnight and instead of agreeing to that we were forced to flee we are told that oh you guys are cowards you left or you left because somebody else forced you to leave so i i cannot come to terms with that by saying that move on move on really hits me very hard aditya what do you move on from right how do you move on after you see your beloved you know your idol and thank you so much for showing the my handsome grandfather's pictures because it's really heartbreaking to see his pictures on hari singh high street all over the media and the news so thank you this is the face i want the world to remember and how do you move on from that justice is not served why are we talking about bhai chara or let's get together now uh, the, when the silent when the silent majority does not speak up they are hard of committing the crime there is no moving on for me till till there is justice so there is acknowledgement and when i speak that like that Aditya, I've been speaking for years now. I not only speak for Daddy G, loud and clear. I speak for each and every Kashmiri Pandit who lost their life. I speak for each and every Kashmiri Pandit who is still struggling in the camps right now. What do you move on from? How do you tell somebody to move on who lost their their kith and kin to senseless killing just because of the faith that they have? How do you move on from where you have thousands of? Uh, loudspeakers telling you to leave and then you are told that you are a coward 
I, I, I'm sorry, I cannot move on, but I, I, I want to say that I totally agree with Mr. Ved and Mr. Amit. This, this, that, and that's what I. And if you, if you kind of recall what I said in my message, now it's the time for us to wait and see where we go from here. I, these co cases have been reopened. This, um, uh, you know, the uh, government of India has decided uh, did to reopen these cases. Absolutely a welcome, welcome decision. But the key is, and it's very important for us to see where do we go from here. Are we going to drag these cases for uh, forever? These should be time bound. We need decision. Please do not, please right. do not peel our wounds again and drag these on by just giving us, you know, uh, showing us, giving us some hope and then just keep us lingering there forever hanging. So um, for me, moving on is not easy. <laughs> I, I need to see, I need to see justice served to everybody. This has been a long, long, painful three plus decades, Aditya, for all of us. When we get together, we talk with other community members who have lost their, you know, father, mother, child. It's, it's, it's very painful. It's overwhelming. We need to. It's about time that we need to, you know, give closure to them, give them some relief. Let's see what happens. So, I'm very hopeful. I'm very. It's a very, very welcome decision. But I have my fingers crossed, and I am being, you know, very cautious about right. what happens next. And we really need to see what what happens you know? absolutely so, absolutely yeah. we're waiting for justice here's hoping that it is delivered soon now that it's been 34 long years we've waited all these years to see justice in fact you know you spoke about Baichara and so-called Kashmiriyat this is what I told Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani a few years back when I met him at a media conclave that you know you've been responsible for killing and staying silent uh, they even didn't spare their own person Abdul Ghani loan so you know forget Kashmiri pundits or minorities and I think Kashmiriyat and Baichara and everything, Kashmiri pundits always stood for that. But in 1990, everything ended. Until the time justice is served, there cannot be any kind of a reconciliation. So let's hope justice is done soon. Swapna Rana, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you to former DGP SP Ved and Amit Rana. Let the crusade continue for justice. And yours, Enemy of the State is the documentary that I made on terrorist Yasin Malik and his crimes against humanity in Jammu and Kashmir ever since 1890. Here's a look at Enemy of the State, the inside story of Yasin Malik. Bandhu ki tahreek chhod kar ek puramun tahreek shuru ki hai. Kashmiri militant leadership hai. Unko peace process mein, jo decision making dialogue process hai. Us mein shamil karna nyahati zaruri hai. He is a terrorist who has mercilessly killed people. Surat bighaad di Kashmir ki. Khun ki nadiyan baha di. Parties in the power later on gave him free way to declare his Jammu Gandhi. He is also a chameleon of sorts who kind of knew how to play the system. Desh drohi ni hathon par hamla kare to desh par hamla. He was given a stamp sort of by the Indian authorities saying, yes, he is our man. There's not one guy I can identify as Yasin Malik. Charges lage the us par court mein jab sunwai hui, usne kaha mujhe apni safai mein kuch nahi kehna, usse umr kaid ki saza mili hai. Two life imprisonments and five, ten years, sir, sir, all to run concurrently. This is where Yasin Malik's fate was sealed in the 2017 Terra Hawala case. A foregone conclusion many believe since he had already pleaded guilty. But this is not an open and shut simple story of a terrorist getting convicted for life imprisonment for his terror crimes. This is a story of a man who is a radical, a cold-blooded murderer, the enemy of the Indian state and a self-professed Gandhian. This is a story of many faces of Yasin Malik. He is a person responsible for causing so much of mayhem, death and destruction 
in the entire state of Jammu and Kashmir and uh, especially in Kashmir region. Those militants at time, they were giving a message every day that we are more powerful than the state of India. Do what you can do. Who is the real Yasin Malik? And where did his journey begin? Born on April the 3rd, 1966, in Mysuma, Srinagar, Yasin Malik was the son of a bus driver. Malik takes his first steps in political notoriety. He formed the Tala Party, which specialized in causing unrest and turmoil in Jammu and Kashmir. A turning point for Yasin Malik at the Kashmir Valley. This was when an activist Malik turned to the gun. In the 1987 polls, he was the polling agent for Muhammad Yusuf Shah, who would go on to earn notoriety as Hizbul Mujahideen chief Sayyid Salahuddin. The national conference led by Farooq Abdullah won the allegedly rigged elections and this was a trigger for pushing the valley's youth away from the mainstream and towards extremism. Malik was among the first batch of youth disillusioned with democracy to cross over to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir for arms training under inter-services intelligence patronage and joined the Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front, the JKLF. Yasin Malik, along with other terrorists who went across, got fully indoctrinated, projected themselves as a pro-independent outfit or a very secular. People who pick up arms, somewhere, somehow, inside them, they have uh, a violent person inside them. JKLF never said, of course, their name looked very secular, Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front. Their selection of targets, it suggested that they were a pro-Pakistani group. In 1989, then Prime Minister VP Singh was at the helm of affairs at the center and Mufti Muhammad Said was India's Home Minister. On December the 8th, JKLF militants led by Malik kidnapped Rubaiya Said, the daughter of India's Home Minister. Their demand for her release free five dreaded militants, Abdul Hamid Sheikh, Ghulam Nabi Bhatt, Noor Muhammad Kalwal, Muhammad Altaf, and Javed Zargar. Here we are, the Home Minister of the country is. is is grieved by a daughter's kidnapping. And what do we do? What do we do? What is happening to our country? There are a handful of people who have come up with guns and the state cannot counter them. It was all planned for bigger objective. That if we do this, probably we can make the state government, uh, the state of the country, kneel down in front of us. This was a turning point. Had those five militants not been released, and this day when they were released, I was in, I was in Kashmir. There was celebration among militant ranks. This was like, as if the last nail in India's coffin had been just, you know, uh, hammered. Kashmir before and after Rubia Said's kidnapping were two completely different places. The release of five terrorists in exchange for Rubia Said had emboldened terrorists like never before in Kashmir. That led to a spate of dastardly acts of violence and terrorism. In the last week of May 2022, a special CBI court in Jammu summoned Rubia Said as a star witness in her own kidnapping case on July 15. <laughs> Apni duty pe ja rahe hai, in a very good human. He asked, in a tipura ka rasta kaun sa hai? Wo usko bata raha hai, ek goli lagne ke baad wo lada hai. 28 bullets lagne hai, mere husband ko total. Yasin Malik and his ilk, they felt completely emboldened and felt that they could bring down the government of India to its knees. It was something which was seen as a big anti-state act and it scared people to, to a great level. In one of the most spine-chilling attacks in Kashmir, four Indian Air Force officers were murdered in cold blood on 25th January 1990. Yasin Malik, who was the area commander, admitted to the killings. 
I have clear knowledge of that day and I also remember people saying that he said please don't give them water. He told people don't give them water, let them die. अगर एक रुपया सैयद कुर्बान हो जाती एक रुपया सैयद तो कितने लोग बच जाते भाई क्यों छोड़े इतने लोग the groups you know jklf other groups hms just started raising its head in srinagar so they would call us immediately a blast happening they'll call us on our phone and telling us humne ye kar diya likh do as the jklf reign of unbridled terror unleashed prominent kashmiri pandits were targeted and gunned down in cold blood justice neel kant kanju tikalal taplu prem nag bhat and ml bhan were just a few of jklf's targets by the end of 1990 most kashmiri pandits had fled the valley fearing for their lives so the idea was to kill one kill a prominent person and then send message a message across to everyone kill one and terrorize a thousand was the perhaps a concept adopted by the jklf at that point of time Yasin Malik was arrested in 1990 after the killings of squadron leader Ravi Khanna and his colleagues from the Air Force. According to a book by former research and analysis wing chief AS Dullah, within 4 years the center began seeing him in a less harsher light. Dullah personally oversaw Malik's release in 1994. In 1993-94 with the rise of the radical separatist outfit Hurriyat Conference led by Hawks Syed Ali Shah Gilani and Mir Waiz Umar Farooq the Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front had to take a back seat in 1995 Yasin Malik announced that he will give up arms after years of violence but he wasn't tried and convicted for several crimes that he had committed against humanity including several cold-blooded murders in the Kashmir Valley I remember the grin on his face when he was flaunting his Armani jacket. I mean, I couldn't stand that. I said, a person who has killed a lot of people. He's from in, he, in Delhi, in the heart of Delhi. I think it was India International Center. He was talking about his life and his style. Efforts were made to get him into the mainstream, and of course, being the local, they felt perhaps he can be used for negotiation, for bringing down, for making the people to look on the other side. Fate favored the enemy of the state. When governments at the center in India believed that a free Yasin Malik would further their objectives in JNK, Malik and another separatist leader, Shabir Shah, were released in 1994 as the government sought to make stakeholders of rebels. This was track to diplomacy at work. Dr. Manmohan Singh. मैं उनको शत शत नमन करती हूँ डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह कोई साधार ये भी कोई सितारे होते हैं इंसान के गर्दिश के कि कहते हैं ना लम्हों की गलती सदियों का हिसाब अब डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह हमारे भीषम पितामह की तरह याद किए जाएंगे मुझे बड़ा दुख लगता है पार्ट ऑफ बिलीव इन डेमोक्रेसी एंड पीस प्रोसेस दे इलेक्ट्रल मोड ही डिड नॉट गोन टू द इलेक्ट्रल मोड because they never believed in the indian constitution it was a day of shame a red carpet was laid for a terrorist who killed people in kashmir but he was given a later red uh, red carpet in the prime minister house as i said earlier keeping in mind probably we can use them use these people to make some peace with the terrorists or peace with the mindset I don't know who, which fools in the government of India thought that they could convert a Yasin Malik from a murderer, a conscienceless murderer who is accused of so many crimes, to a man who could be governing the Indian uh, in Indian uh, state. As an Indian, as a uh, Kashmiri, you felt hurt. You felt ashamed of your government when killers were roaming free and people were defending them. They were uh, seen with the prime ministers. You know, there was total confusion. A state of India looked like a pygmy in front of the big colossus of terrorism that time. In a 2001 interview, Yasin Malik famously said about himself, "When people look at Yasin Malik, they have to look at three Yasin Maliks. 
one from 84 to 88, a student activist, the second from 88 to 94, a militant, and the third from 94 onwards, a Gandhian. We have to put it in the Kashmiri people. Because this is a crime. While Malik claimed to be smoking the peace pipe, the government finally recognized his double speak. The National Investigative Agency, NIA, charged Malik with spearheading the Joint Resistance Leadership, which brought together disparate factions of the Hurriyat and inciting the 2016 unrest in the valley. Malik was arrested in April 2019 and his arrest came weeks after the JKLF was banned for the second time by the Indian government after the Pulwama terror attack in which 40 Braveheart CRPF personnel were brutally killed. Pulwama mein hua krur atangwadi hamla yeh dikhata hai ki ab baaton ka samay nikal chuka hai. Ab saari dunia ko आतंकवाद और उसके समर्थकों के विरुद्ध एकजुट होकर ठोस कदम उठाने की आवश्यकता है। I'm I'm so happy that at least now in our lifetime this is coming to an end. At least justice will be given to those people who were wronged by the state also. Now this is the biggest change. Pursuing the cases, taking them to logical conclusion. A deterrence is the biggest factor, certainty of deterrence. In this country, there is one nation, one leader, one leader. That is very clear. And then, Amit Shah Ji and Prime Minister Modi Ji will never allow any such element to raise their hand in the country. The fact that a cold-blooded killer like Yasin Malik evaded trial for three decades exposes the policy failure of successive governments at multiple fronts. But with his conviction in the 2017 Terra Hawala case, the wheels of justice are finally moving. The litmus test for the Modi government now would be to deliver speedy justice in the killing of four unarmed Indian Air Force men by Yasin Malik. The family members of the IF officers are waiting for a closure for the last three decades. In July, the case hearing will resume in a special Tada CBI court in Jammu. But is it the time for the criminal justice system of India to sentence the person responsible for these crimes that befits the enemy of the Indian state? एक को नजर आते हैं तारे, दूसरे को नजर आती है कीचड़। It depends upon you कि आप क्या देखना पसंद करते हैं। इस कॉर्डर लीडर खन्ना का खून इसको फॉलो कर रहा है। ये बचेगा नहीं, उस केस में भी नहीं बचेगा। Well, that was the enemy of the state story on terrorist Yasin Malik. Tomorrow is the day, viewers, when the NIA will be seeking death penalty. For Yasin Malik, and we'll be tracking that live here on News 9 Live. Up next, we go back to the Lok Sabha in New Delhi, which is debating the no confidence motion against the Modi government. So, we just requested our Honorable Prime Minister to come to the house and so that we can talk about it, so that we could just share our viewpoints with the Honorable Prime Minister. The Honorable Prime Minister was in front of the Honorable Prime Minister. इस चीज की हमें हमेशा